When within this modern world of academic study, a ruin is found, a ruin of such astonishing feature or size, one which is clearly an out-of-place artifact within the realm of its accompanying modern paradigm, no matter how amazing, how historically important, due to its sheer inexplicability, one will rarely hear about it in popular debate. And one such ruin is Kat Shibib. The archaeological site was first identified by British diplomat Sir Alec Kirkbride in 1948. An ancient wall over 93 miles long, whose origins are predictably unknown. Ever since its initial discovery, a range of disciplines, including archaeologists, scientists, and anthropologists, have studied the wall. Yet the date of the Khat Shabib's construction, however, is still claimed as unknown, regardless of it also being claimed as, quote, widely debated by archaeologists. Regardless of this claim, many will have never heard of this spectacular ancient ruin, a reality we claim not by coincidence, but design. Recent study of the wall by the Aerial Archaeology and Jordan Project have found that it runs north-northeast, south-southwest, spanning a total unbroken distance of 66 miles. However, they also discovered sections where two run parallel, this for an additional substantial distance. Quote, if we add the spurs and stretches of parallel wall, the total length would be about 150 kilometers or 93 miles, wrote David Kennedy, a professor at the University of Western Australia, and Rebecca Banks, a research assistant at Oxford University, in a paper published recently in the journal Zeitschrift for Orient Archaeology. It is unquestionably a remarkable ancient ruin, one evident of a once highly capable, yet now lost, civilization. It is a ruin which we find highly compelling. Although often disagreeing with academic explanations regarding the origin and past constructor of many of the world's as yet unexplained ruins, some have become so old, the field of geology can often become an ally to these deliberate misconceptions, supporting the premise based around permitted timelines, events already dated and published disguised assumptions as to the timeline for the development and chronological dating for Homo sapiens' initial globetrotting, with a timeline for their travels across Earth supposedly already established. Additionally, as the ruins contradictory to this timeline of events age and slowly erode away to the point of near unidentifiability, this predictably allows these same geologists to merely dismiss such artifacts as natural formations. However, sometimes ruins will turn up in locations that have already been explored, dated, and explained by these same fields. This accurate study of terrain shift, completed by scholars prior to the discovery of ancient ruins, later discovered to be resting, hidden within these particular places submerged ruins that geology had already established a timeline for when these areas in question were originally flooded. As such, when ancient ruins are found to be submerged in these locations, instead of remaining an ally for the currently attested timeline of events, have already condemned themselves through their accurate dating of the rise in water levels, thus instead become unwitting advocates for the fact that not only do these ruins undeniably outdate the current attested chronology of the development of civilization, but prove beyond doubt that past now lost civilizations did indeed once exist, with many of these advanced cultures, just as biblical and Atlantean legends have long suggested, sunk into the sea during a great flood only rediscovered with the use of penetrative radar systems attached to modern satellites. We have, in the past, covered the ancient ruins found off the coast of Cuba, also submerged under ancient waters, which includes a compelling pyramid complex. Also the Bimini Road, which although clearly of an artificial nature, has to be dismissed by the modern academic world, clearly due to the vast amount of time that such ruins have been submerged. With many of these sites, 
according to geological studies done upon local sea levels, also before said discoveries were exposed, dating them to a minimum of 12,000 years of age. These discoveries have not just been made within the oceans of Earth. Thanks to this same technology, a mega metropolis has also been found under the dense jungles of Guatemala. This discovery, although not sharing the same undeniable data for its age, supported by geological study, is of such an unimaginably enormous size, revealed to contain such advanced architectural planning, that it and many other similar sites have forced many fields of historical study to re-evaluate their understandings of past populations, of what we strongly believe are, in fact, remnants of a now lost, yet once highly successful, prosperous ancient civilization. And our subject for this video was found by the most unlikely of individuals, a skipper of a trawler, scanning the seabed with sonar off the coast of Azores, was stunned when he peered at his readout screen and was met by the outline of a near pristine ancient pyramid. After sharing his discovery with the mainstream media, certain individuals with penetrative satellite radar systems were equally astonished to discover that this ancient now submerged pyramid, just like Guatemala, is but a single piece of yet another mega metropolis that was hidden until now that according to previous geological studies of the sea levels around the Spanish coast, has been dated at a minimum of 100,000 years old, overwhelming evidence to support not only the channel's continued posit of hidden, highly ancient, once highly advanced lost civilization, but that modern academia continued to be funded to ignore them, going to great lengths to conceal such discoveries although exploration is currently at its early stages. We will, of course, keep you posted. It is undoubtedly highly compelling. We are frequently asked to cover the intriguing ancient documents of ancient Sumeria, and for good reason. For although the Sumerian king list is officially classified as an accurate and important chronographic document from ancient Mesopotamia, the lifespans of many of the oldest of its rulers are stated as having lived for upwards of 30,000 years. Furthermore, there is a noticeable steady decline in the duration of these rulers' lives. This gradual decline, when seen in its complete translated form, if of course it is indeed an accurate documentation of history, displays a clear example of devolution over many thousands of years. It lists a long succession of cities in Sumer and the surrounding regions. The first fragment of the text, which is largely believed to date back at least 4,000 years, was found in the early 1900s by Hermann Hilbrecht at the site of ancient Nippur, with its discovery subsequently published in 1906. Since Hilbrecht's discovery, at least 18 other fragments of the list have been found, most of them dating from the second half of the Isin dynasty. Yet this controversial claim of past rulers' ages is a reoccurring theme with many of these fragments, reiterating these incredibly long lifespans. Furthermore, intriguingly, the Epic of Gilgamesh, perhaps the most famous, still surviving contribution to world history dating back to Mesopotamia, is depicted as nothing short of a giant. Often depicted, carrying what is perceived as his pet lion, the cat, however, appears far from tame, attempting to take a chunk from his arm, but due to Gilgamesh's relative size to his furry friend, merely appears as nothing more than a kitten when in his embrace. Could these claims of a 20,000-year lifespan be connected to the additional claim of many of the figures from this era's incredible sizes? Could heavy research and a subsequent in-depth expose regarding the reality surrounding the claims of the Mesopotamian civilization, finally confirm the past existence of not only giants, but human beings, whom, after their derivation from divinity, initially had lifespans stretching into 30,000 years? For as the list states, and I quote, After the kingship descended from heaven, they were situated within Eridung in Alulim. It is named after Eridung, who became king, he ruled for 28,800 years, with Alijar subsequently ruling for 36,000 years after him. 
two kings who ruled for 64,800 years." End quote. As one would predict, such claims are simply dismissed by academics the world over. This is, of course, due to the tales of the king's immense longevity, and due to their own paradigms, one they are often funded to regurgitate, would have simply been impossibility. Additionally, along with this staunch denial, to even consider such possibilities within mainstream study, this same fate befalls the countless, gigantic, unexplained megaliths found the world over. This is a clear example of how valuable academia perceives their illusionary, oracle-esque all-knowing regarding a complete history of human civilization. For if one was to consider such past individuals, having been responsible for the Great Pyramids for example, one could finally explain how, and indeed who, accomplished such ancient feats. But I digress. Could Mesopotamia be the key to unlocking many secrets hidden or lost within human history? We find such possibilities as highly compelling. <laughs>